the teacup. A couple used to go to England to shop in a beautiful antique store. Their last trip was a celebration of their 25th wedding anniversary. They both liked antiques and pottery, especially the teacups. Spotting an exceptional cup, they asked, May we see that? We've never seen a cup quite so beautiful. As the lady handed it to them, suddenly the teacup spoke. You don't understand, it said. I have not always been a teacup. There was a time when I was just a lump of red clay. My master took me and he rolled me. He pounded me and patted me over and over. And I yelled out, don't do that. I don't like it. Let me alone. But he only smiled and gently said, not yet. Then, wham, I was placed on a spinning wheel and suddenly I was spun around and around and around. Stop it. I'm getting so dizzy. I'm going to be sick, I screamed. But the master only nodded and said quietly, Not yet. He spun me and he poked me and he prodded me and he bent me all out of shape to suit himself. And then he put me in the oven. I never felt such heat. I yelled and knocked and pounded at the door. Help! Get me out of here! I could see him through the opening. I could read his lips as he shook his head from side to side. Not yet. When I thought I couldn't bear it another minute, the door opened. He carefully took me out and put me on the shelf, and I began to cool. Oh, that feels so good. Oh, this is much better, I thought. But after I cooled, he picked me up and he brushed and painted me all over. The fumes were horrible. I thought I would gag. Oh, please stop it, stop it, I cried. He only shook his head and said, not yet. Then suddenly he put me back in the oven. Only it was not like the first one. This was twice as hot and I just knew I would suffocate. I begged and I pleaded and I screamed and I cried. I was convinced that I would never make it. I was ready to give up. Just then the door opened and he took me out again. He placed me on the shelf where I cooled and I waited and I waited, wondering, what is he going to do to me next? An hour later, he handed me a mirror and he said, look at yourself. And I did. I said, that's not me. That couldn't be me. It's beautiful. I'm beautiful. Quietly he spoke. I want you to remember, then he said. I know it hurt to be rolled and pounded and patted, but had I left you alone, you have, would have dried up. I know it made you dizzy to spin around and round on that wheel, but if I had stopped, you would have crumbled. I know it hurt and it was hot and disagreeable in the oven, but if I hadn't put you there, you would have cracked. I know the fumes were bad when I brushed and painted you all over, but if I hadn't done that, you never would have been finished. You would not have had any color in your life. If I hadn't put you back in that second oven, you wouldn't have survived long because the finish would not have held. Now you're a finished product. Now you are what I had in mind when I first began with you. The moral of this story is God knows what he's doing for each of us. He is the potter and we are his clay. He will mold us and make us and expose us to just enough pressures of just the right kind that we may be made into the flawless piece of work to fulfill his good, pleasing and perfect will. So when life seems hard and you're being pounded and patted and pushed at almost beyond endurance, when your world seems to be spinning out of control, when you feel like you're in a fiery furnace of trials, when life seems to stink, think about this. Brew a cup of your favorite tea in the prettiest teacup, sit down and think of this story, and then have a little talk with the potter. Have a little talk with Jesus. God bless you. Now I would like to read a poem about um, 
You are invited to celebrate at our Heavenly Father's house, and everyone is invited. This is called the Directions to Our Heavenly Father's House. Make a right turn onto Believeth Boulevard. Keep straight and go through the green light, which is Jesus Christ. From there, you must turn onto the Bridge of Faith, which is over troubled waters. When you get off the bridge, make a right and keep straight. You are on the King's Highway. That's heaven bound. Keep going for three miles. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. Exit off onto Grace Boulevard. From there, make a right turn on Gospel Lane. Keep straight and then make another right onto Prayer Road. As you travel on your way, you'll yield not to the traffic of Temptation Avenue. Also, avoid Sin Street because it is a dead end. Pass up Envy Drive and Hate Avenue. Also, pass Hypocrisy Road, Gossiping Lane, and Backbiting Boulevard. However, you must go down Long Suffering Lane, Persecution Street, and Trials and Tribulations Avenue. But that's all right, because Victory Road is straight ahead. Everybody's welcome. Thank you for letting me share it with you. God bless you, and have an awesome day. Thank you, Mr. Avery Dunn, for letting me be a part of Radio 95.5 Radio Station. God bless you, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the invitation to share the love of Jesus with everyone this morning. As we begin to celebrate this new year, 2021, help us to remember that Jesus is the answer for the world today. First of all, let us pray. Lord, we ask you to help us to live the way that you would have us to live. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you in your sight. If we speak about love, let us be known for love. If we recite scripture, let us first live by that scripture. Help us to be able to match our walk and our talk. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. The inspirations I'd like to share with you this morning are from 1 John 4, 8, which says, God is love. The first one I would like to share with you is entitled, Celebrate You. You are worth celebrating. You are worth everything. You are unique. In all the world, there's only one with your talent, experience, and gifts. God created only one you. You have unique potential to love, to care, to create, to grow, and to sacrifice. If you only believe in yourself, it doesn't matter your age or your color or whether your parents loved you or not. Maybe they wanted to, but they couldn't. Let it go. It belongs to the past. You belong to the now. It doesn't matter where you've been, the wrong you've done, the mistakes you've made, the people you've hurt. You are forgiven. You are accepted. You are okay. You are loved in spite of everything. So love yourself and flourish the seeds within you. Celebrate you. Begin now. Start anew. Give yourself a new birth today. You are you and that is all you need to be. You are temporary, here today and gone tomorrow. But today, today can be a new beginning, a new thing, a new life. You cannot deserve this life. It is given freely. This is a miracle called God. So celebrate the miracle and celebrate you. Now I'd like to read another one by Emmett Fox. The title of it is Love. There is no difficulty that enough love will not conquer. No disease that enough love will not heal. No door that enough love will not open. No gulf that enough love will not bridge. No wall that enough love will not throw down. No sin that enough love will not redeem. It makes no difference how deeply seated the trouble, how hopeless the outcome, how muddled the tangle, how great the mistake. A sufficient realization of love will dissolve it all. If only we could love enough, we would be the happiest and the most powerful beings in the world. Now abideth faith, hope, and love. 
but the greatest of these is love. That's 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That's John 15, 13. In closing, I have invited Wellspring Community Church, Pastor Nathaniel Rios and his wife to sing a song for you. The name of the song, the title of it, is Jesus is the Answer for the World Today. God bless you, and I hope you enjoy the song as much as I do. I love it. So God bless you, and I hope you enjoy it. Have a blessed uh, week and to celebrate Jesus. Thank you. Never be discouraged by Helen Steiner Ross. There is really nothing we need know or even try to understand if we refuse to be discouraged and trust God's guiding hand. So take heart and meet each minute with faith in God's great love. Aware that every day of life is controlled by God above. And never dread tomorrow or what the future brings. Just pray for strength and courage and trust God in all things. And never grow discouraged, be patient and just wait. For God never comes too early and he never comes too late. By Helen Steiner Rice. A poem by Zenendo Parker. We think about the Israelites and how they did complain. We wouldn't do that. We wouldn't do the same. Would we? Wouldn't we? Well, let me see. The weather changes and we get hot. We grumble and grumble about the weather we've got. Then comes winter and we get cold. We can't be satisfied to save our soul. The weather changes and we grumble again. I've never been so cold since I don't know when. It's too hot, it's too cold. We can't be satisfied to save our soul. We just fuss and fuss and fuss. Whatever it is, it doesn't suit us. We don't like our food. We don't like what we have to eat. We don't want to move. We just want to take a seat. Well, we have heat and we have fans. We have what it takes for comfort for any man. We need to thank God for what we've got. For you know, and I know, we've got a lot. Why don't we start thanking him from day to day and thank him for all the good things he sent our way. If we could start to name them one by one, we wouldn't have time to thank him for all that he has done. Understands by Beverly J. Anderson. My Savior knows my every need. He notes the tears that fall. He knows when sorrow overwhelms and heeds my anguish crawl. He cares when I'm faint of heart and hope is almost gone. He understands my loneliness as gray clouds hide the dawn. Till then, his nearness comforts me in such a blessed way, assuring me I'll share my grief. He'll share my grief and never from me stray. Within the shelter of his arms there's refuge for my fears. As Jesus soothes my broken heart and wipes away my tears, his presence brings sweet peace to me. His love becomes the light that penetrates my troubled soul and lifts the veil of night. By Beverly J. Anderson.